Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. There isn't a lot to say about the new iPhone. The newest iPhone is always just that. It's the newest iPhone that brings the latest features that Apple deems worthy for its most popular device. But this year is different. The first iPhone was a monumental announcement that changed the course of modern tech history. But at the time, there was a lot missing from that phone. No video recording, no MMS, no changeable wallpapers, and of course the price. It took time for the iPhone to be the phone everyone could and should have. But the iPhone X changed that. It ushered in the $1,000 plus smartphone era, and that is a lot to swallow for me and a lot of people. And Apple, to their credit, reacted, introduced the iPhone XR a year later. But that kind of seems like the lesser iPhone, the phone you got if maybe you couldn't afford the iPhone XS or the XS Max. So after the iPhone 11, finally a perfect compromise of features, specs, and price. So now the iPhone 11 is the perfect phone for everyone again. So when you look at the iPhone 11 next to last year's 10R, aesthetically, they look really similar. They've got the same 6.1 inch liquid retina LCD display. The backs look kind of similar, stronger glass this time around, but glass is just glass. There are some new color options available. They're a bit more muted than with the 10R, but just looking at these phones, it appears as though not much has changed. But that display looks the same as last year because it is the exact same as last year. It's an LCD display, it's still 720-ish resolution, and it's clearly not as good as an OLED display. But I'm okay with that because of the price. If you pixel peep, you can still start to see pixels. Colors won't be as vibrant. Of course, black levels won't be as black. The white levels are awesome on LCD, but as you keep using the phone, those differences start to fade away, especially if you're not holding an OLED display next to the display on the iPhone 11. It is amongst the best, even despite the resolution of LCD panels that I have ever tested. But if you were to pick one area where most people will nitpick the iPhone 11, it's definitely gonna be the display. I still really like Face ID. I was a bit reticent when it first got introduced on the iPhone 10. Now it's my preferred way for security, for storing my passwords, unlocking third-party apps, unlocking my phones. I don't miss Touch ID at all. Face ID has been updated. The notch is still the same size. Face ID is definitely faster. Now part of that is due to improved hardware. Part of that also goes to credit iOS 13. You've got improved angles. I still would have really liked it to work if it was flat on a table maybe something for next generation, uh, but it is noticeably faster and the angles are better than on the iPhone XR. If you guys want to make awesome intros or sort of spice up your videos, the folks at Storyblocks have you covered. So you get unlimited downloads. Anything in the video member library is yours to download and use as much as you want, including HD and 4K footage, After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and more. Whenever you sign up for the unlimited video plan, you can also download anything from the audio and image libraries and get all the sound effects, music, and photos you need with the unlimited all access plan. So all the footage is super easy to find. If you want like aerial footage, and you don't own a drone or you're not comfortable flying one, they have aerial footage for you too. It really is footage and video for pretty much anything that you might need. Of course, it's all royalty free. You can use it on YouTube, if you're making a commercial, whatever you want. You don't have to worry about that green copyright flag. Storyblocks is really the first place you should go for stock video footage, B-roll, stock images, everything all in one place. If you want to learn more, check out Storyblocks for yourself. Link to them down below. So obviously there are differences with the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max. It's the telephoto camera and it's the LCD versus OLED panel. That's essentially it. The A13 processor that's powered in the iPhone 11 is the same processor that's in those $1,200, $1,500 phones. So you're not getting any sort of speed sacrifice. 
And in all fairness, I'm not noticing any difference in speed on the 13 versus the 12. You don't generally start to notice those improvements until like eight-ish months into the phone's life cycle, but we will really notice it if you wanna keep the phone for two or three years. That extra kind of headroom of horsepower is gonna make the phone fly with iOS 14, iOS 15, when those inevitably start to hit. But ordinary things you're gonna do, opening apps, playing games, watching videos, this thing is an absolute beast at handling any of that. Battery life was one of the big selling points of the iPhone XR. I think it's a lot of the reasons that people went for the XR instead of the XS or the XS Max. And it's slightly better here on the iPhone 11. You get about an extra hour-ish, according to Apple. So I have two different use cases. I use my phones pretty hard. I'm off the charger on 6 a.m. and then back on the charger around 11. There's a lot of video, gaming, social media, email, and just a lot of mindless zombie-like scrolling. By the time I was done with my phone at the end of the day, I had about 45 to 50%, which is huge, but I know my use is probably more heavy than other people. I actually bought my wife a lavender, the purple iPhone 11 for her was an upgrade from her iPhone 10, and I was checking her battery life every day. She doesn't use it nearly as much as I do. She had about three and a half to four hour screen on time, and she had 71% battery life left at the end of the day, and she didn't charge it at any point throughout the day. That's insane. Your use case is probably somewhere in between, and there aren't that many phones where I can say these are two day phones in between charges. The iPhone 11 is one of those. If you sit at a desk and you have an hour or two to plug your phone in, then you're going to be able to last easily through the day. If there's a gripe with battery life on the iPhone 11, it's not even the iPhone 11, it's the silly five watt charger that Apple's including in the box. This is capable of fast charging. I would have loved to have seen that 18 watt charger that you get with the Pro and the Pro Max uh, with the iPhone 11. It's again, capable of all those speeds, but that five watt brick makes me, makes me very sad. So it's my son's birthday, put on the Spider-Man costume. We're gonna surprise him and his cousins. I have a tendency to equate memories to technology and I will always remember the iPhone 11 and my son's sixth birthday party. What you guys might not know is I have an official Marvel licensed Spider-Man costume and so I put the costume on to see the smile on my kids' faces and my cousins or their cousins' faces when they could see Spider-Man show up at his party uh, was a really cool experience for me. But I had my wife's iPhone 11. It was the first phone that I had handy. And it's cool that those photos will be preserved. Just kind of showing that phones now and cameras now, no matter what you're using, can preserve really cool memories. And I'm gonna have that with me for the rest of my life. So now you've got two lenses here, and I think those two actually add a lot of value to what you get with the iPhone 11. You're missing the telephoto, and I actually use the telephoto, and I might be in the minority. I would have actually preferred the telephoto here instead of the ultra-wide. But I know that you guys probably don't feel that way, but overall camera experiences is really good. Smart HDR on the 10R was pretty decent. It is vastly improved now with the iPhone 11. You can see details in things ordinarily you couldn't see details in. I think every smartphone nowadays generally takes good pictures in ideal light. If you're outside at noon, things are going to look pretty. But we start to see differences in the cameras and the software that goes along with them is when light's not ideal. When it's dusk or when you're indoors and you have different light sources kind of blaring at you, I think that's an area where you see a huge upgrade on the 11 versus the 10R or any other previous iPhone. The detail you get is amazing. That's not just due to the hardware, but Apple's doing on the software side is really impressive. And things are even going to get better. We've got things like Deep Fusion coming in future software updates. They're going to analyze the image on a pixel by pixel basis. What Apple's doing with their algorithms, essentially take four pictures before and then one afterwards and stitch them all together and be able to notice what's sky, what's people, and give you the best looking picture is really impressive. And the quality you get in any scenario looks really good. It might not be as poppy as what you get with Samsung, but the pictures look true to life. You don't have any sort of weird facial smoothing like maybe Smart HDR had when it first launched. People's faces look like people's faces. So all that awesome image stuff also applies to video. 
4K60 with HDR looks amazing. The stabilization is really good. We're talking like action camera level stabilization when you're walking with this or even running. It's hard to tell that you're really moving or bouncing that fast when you look back at the video. Where things get, I think, extra awesome is night mode. And I wanna give Google credit for sort of pushing Apple's hand, sort of make nighttime photography something that people accepted and expected with their phones. Apple's done a really good job with night mode here. They're not trying to make nighttime shots look like daytime shots, they just look like really beautiful shots that were taken at night. The sky still look black, and if there are stars in the sky when you took the photo, you can see those stars in the sky on the picture. It doesn't look like some blown up version of blue. And I think maybe the best part is you don't have to think about it. You don't have to set a separate mode to do that. And for you, that might not be an issue. Maybe you're deliberate about the photos you take. Somebody like my wife, who doesn't really care that much about technology, just opens up her camera and snaps a photo. It was mind blowing to her and kind of reiterating that the iPhone 11 just works. For a lot of people, that is a huge advantage. And just another reason that I think the camera system on the iPhone 11 is really impressive. I generally use an iPhone because for me, it just works. I know that might sound like marketing talk right out of Apple's mouth, but all the little things, the airdrops, the shared folders, the iCloud drive, they all come together to make a package that just works well seamlessly and doesn't require a huge amount of thought to use it. It just works well and works well the first time. And for those reasons, when people ask me what phone should they get, I generally recommend the iPhone, and now I can recommend the iPhone 11 as pretty much the perfect phone for everybody. And with the iPhone 11, Apple did something very un-Apple-like. They actually lowered the price of the iPhone, $50. That goes against usually what they've done with these devices, maintaining price points or even raising them as new models get introduced. Now, the iPhone 11 is certainly not perfect. It's easy to nitpick, and perhaps rightfully so, things like the screen, lack of USB Type-C, missing the telephoto lens. And if you want most of those things, the Pro still exists if you're willing to pay the premium for it. But for the first time in a long time, the most affordable iPhone is the iPhone everybody should buy. And that's a really big deal for folks looking to get a new phone. You no longer have to pay $1,000 plus to get the latest and greatest from Apple. You got the iPhone 11 waiting for you now with open arms. I hope you guys enjoyed our iPhone 11 review. A big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, I'll link to them down below.